I am Maisha, if you're wondering, I'm here to talk about stuff uh, and nothing and everything. Right now, this is, you know, it's the, it's the big trend that I keep seeing online. It's the um, dried moss, sea moss. Uh, this is the Irish sea moss. And they say, I... Y- uh, soak in water for a few hours and add some honey and maybe spirulina and blend it so it it has the most effect on you so that's the way to have it because on its own it tastes like a row of sea things once I was living with a Korean friend uh and she said the delicacy, delicacy of Korea is uh, this very special, uh, uh, rare, what's this name? Come on, guess it. It's a sea creature, it has a shell, and it just does this crab. And it's a big crab. And we got these two crabs from a Korean restaurant and they're all, and she said, this is how you eat it. So we cracked at the back of it, the icing, icing, or or we put its mouth in our mouth. And she said, suck it. And I did. I put it, I tilted, and I sucked it. Within seconds, I vomited everything. It's like, I love sea. I grew up by the sea. And we used to collect these big sea lurches. So they had all these spikes. And it's just the, the, the place that I spend my three, four months every year between 10 and 18. was this beautiful bay and the ground, the floor of the sea was just covered with them. And... So every time you dive in, you come up with lots, lots of them. This big black thing stick stuck on your foot, either underneath or on the side. So this just we became an expert to clear those out. Or you can put a olive oil over it and leave it to the hand of the god or see hand of the olive oil to take it out of it, and it comes out in time. And we used to eat those sea lurches. Lurches, you know, there's like, they're like, it's like a bowl kind of thing. They have lots of spikes, big spikes. And then when you clear them after you dry them, they, and you clear them and you dry them out and they come up with us as wonderful colors and shapes and patterns. So before you do all those clearing out and uh, drying, you eat we can eat the inside apparently this is like one of the most expensive things in the world uh and we ate it i ate it in abundant <laughs> so <laughs> so everyone there ate it in like just like picking up eight nine ten or right before you dry it under the sun you just eat the inside i can eat that on its own out of the sea, raw, and it's salty in the sea, it's a mossy, it's fine. But that crab was seer than sea, and uh, that's why. If you, that's what I noticed, like, just soaking the sea moss in the water and letting it swell, to make a jelly or eat it in that way it has that kind of taste. So when someone said, well, actually, how you need to eat it to get the most benefits is to mix it with raw honey. And then I, and someone added spirulina in it. It's like, God bless you all. Now, I don't need to worry about making a smoothie just because I want to have the spirulina. So I can now add it in this and I have it. 
and I'm, I'm happy. Let's eat it all together. You watch me whilst I'm eating it. So this is that kind of a... I sort of blended it, but I think I didn't let it soak enough. So it's not like... Perhaps if I let it stay in this for another 10 hours, it will become a jelly. But I'm sure my stomach can handle digesting of a little bit of softened seaweed. I trust it. Absolutely. It has this taste of the sea. You know, it's like you go to a seaside in winter and it's cold. You're sort of wrapped up but your face is all, is all, all open because you weren't expecting to be at the seaside and it's being that cold and windy and breezy and suddenly that breeze brings the waves in the air they all vaporize and that vapor smashes your face and your mouth is open all that sea but the raw sea uh, hits your mouth unexpectedly as that kind of taste but honey covers it up and yeah so that's good what I'll tell you what I bought a kilo and a half raw honey on eBay I don't know like if it is a Bulgarian honey, I don't know, it's like um, some Yugoslavian mountain honey, I don't know. But what I know of it is, the prices are amazing. If you compare it, that right now, if I want to get, but get a local raw honey for 200 gram is about 10 pounds here. This is like when they know me, there's a, ah, oh, I share. You are my friend. So I'm going to give you, yes, a friend price, 10 pounds. So that's 200 grams, a friend price, 10 pounds. Even if you say the one kilo, multiply it with five, it's 50 pounds per kilo friend price. So I bought one, uh, one and a half kilos on eBay for 16 pounds. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think the shipping is included too. So, I mean, unless you actually get your beehives, get your bees and do your, make your own honey. It can't be that difficult. I mean, of course, they're animals and you need to look after them. You need to make sure they're protected. You need to make sure they don't have any pests. You need to make sure they have the right temperature, right place. You need to make sure that they're happy honey, happy bees, happy honeys. You're not going to make your honey, make your bee work so hard. I think that's what they do when... I'm, I'm going to tell you another, something else was just reminded me. That's what they do when they make almond milk. So, so there's almond orchards, like hundreds of almond trees, and they're blossoming. So they bring these worker bees, beehives, and they put to work. They work so much, and at the end of the harvest season, the beehiver loses eighty to ninety percent of the of of bees. It's like bee slavery. 
It's to be slavery. Let's not have be slavery. What is really good is the bees do what they want to do. They fly around and we provide. But I was wondering how actually this beehiver made them work more than they they want to. So why do they? Why can't they? Can't can't they stop? Is it like maybe there's something about like for them to be able to stop uh, um, collecting pollens? Maybe they need to have their homes hives to be filled, and so the queen bee feels safe and. Oh, there's all these honeys around and they're like, oh, we don't have to work that much anymore. You see all these honeys around. It's enough for everyone, enough for the bee farmer, enough for the queen, enough for the new babies, enough for us. And we can stop now. Okay. Maybe that's what's not happening. Maybe this guy is just like taking the, the honey. Work bees. Work bees, slave master. <laughs> Asking your job, what's your job? I'm the bee slave master. Chick bees, chick. Let's not be a bee slave master. Yeah. All right. So. Well, I suppose this might be the first of all. So, if there is anything to subscribe or follow, just fucking do so. Like, I don't know. And what I do, I I wrote... I wrote stuff about, about my life and I have a show. And it's really, like, when you say it's really funny and it is... Uh, just shit, isn't it? It's. I used to say, oh, it's it's not. Oh, it's just that. It's not. Oh, it's nothing. It's ah, oh, it's it's nothing. Ah, oh. and then like it's but fucking it's really good because I keep saying, oh, it's nothing. Then like, no audience. You know, I should have married with a marketing genius. I could be the worker bees. Oh, the queen bee? Well, I needed to make babies then, but... And the marketing genius could have been marketing me. This is what... Oh, there's a dog snoring. It's not my dog, and it's the really old dog. And I'm really worried that he hasn't poo for two days. And I'm walking around in the house like, where did you poo in the house? Not in my house. I took him out twice today. And I gave him more food than he's supposed to eat so he can poo, so I can see that he has done it. So he's not like a secretly. <laughs> when I'm not. So that's what they did. I'm going back to the one subject for this. Artists, some artists or the singers, they married a marketing genius. And then what happened is the marketing genius was a narcissist as well. And then put put that artist woman in work like Nina Simone or uh, oh, I forgot her name. Like the lady with a really long, really long and like awesome legs, Tina Turner. Yeah. So... They were like, chick, 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 and bringing the money. Shik, 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 shik. The others produced, and they were great performers, amazing songs. And uh, and the, the husbands were the bee slave masters. 
marketing geniuses. So let's not have that, but it will naturally happen. Well, it was really nice to meet you anyway. Um, I'm Aisha. I'm not Aisha, I'm Aisha Gulbalkase. But just for the sake of things flowing easy and written easier and read easy is ice balkos <laughs> it's you can shortly call me <laughs> and it's like a snake if there is anything to follow follow Oh, I don't know when I will do this again because I won't be here for two weeks, but I'll try to, yeah, see, let's see how things work. But I'm proud of myself for today. I actually bought four of these. They are not real and they were four pounds and I bartered. And I got four of them for twelve pounds. They are different sizes, not too long, but just about the same length. Maybe one of them is longer. One one has a three, one the other one has a two, but a thicker one. It's just different. So I don't know. I kind of like it. It has this really old school lady. Like I don't mean like oh, I'm a lady. <laughs> Like, really old school woman. She's really trying to look proper feeling. And I think it goes quite well with my t-shirt. So I'm like, I'm prepared now. I'm ready for the screen now. And I just came from a jog. And I have this weird thing under me. But once I put this on... I'm prepared now. I'm ready. All right. Okay. Cheer up. Cheer up.